My first reaction, I got called, and um, people was telling me he got shot. First thing I did was I grabbed a phone, I called one of my guys. We got a couple guys down there, you know. Man, look, homie got shot here at this hospital. Get over here right now. Our kids in the hospital, this happened, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, snap. I got the call, man, and it was kind of like, Nah, man, you know, like, really? Have a motherfucker that close to you is kind of like kind of on a roller coaster, emotional roller coaster, and wondering if they gonna be all right, you know what I'm saying? Gangsta, gangsta, read all about it. Paul came back on his shit, I doubt it. Why? Cause ain't dropping like I used to. <laughs> Niggas want me to die, but I refuse to. I, I got a will to live. Five gunshots, man. Had to figure out how to walk again. I got a 20% chance of living. You know, God is great. I've been in Atlanta for like six months, man, sitting in the hospital, Grady Memorial. Uh, um, I got shot up like five times right here in this exact location. You know, trying to help some fuck niggas out. Who the fuck was he with? You know what I mean? That was the first thing I was thinking like, because I knew he was, Parquet tells me everything, he every move he made. So if he's gonna be working with somebody, he'll tell me, like, yo, I'm working with such and such. So I knew who he was working with, and I knew he was traveling back and forth, but I didn't know, like, what was going on because I wasn't with him, you know what I mean? I'm usually sometimes with him. We went on trips before, and sometimes I'm with him, sometimes I'm not. But this particular time, he was having meetings and stuff like that, and he was working on music with different people that I didn't know, and he was traveling back and forth, so. I didn't know what was going on or what transpired, but the first thing I thought was like, who, who was this person that he was with or whatever, you know what I mean? What's going on in Atlanta that, you know what I mean? He's not even from there, so it was weird. We were shooting a video or whatever, and uh, I had bust a move with the little homies. Pulled up right here, I was at the park right here. They was double parked with his cars at. I was waiting for him to slide back out the building. That's the dust and shit out. So, the other little guys pulled up in a van, in like a six seater cat van, over like, I got in there with him, talked to him a little bit, and that guy from the passenger seat jumped in the back with me, put the off for a gun on me, like, do me a favor and take all your jewelry off. And he was so close, he had to look in his eye like he was gonna shoot me whether I took off the jewelry and gave it to him or not. So my first instinct was to grab the gun. Boom. And we rationed it in the car, the gun go off, burn the top of my hand. I let it go. Second shot hit me in my chest. And uh other two shots hit me in my stomach. So I'm, I jump back on him. I'm holding him off with one hand, trying to get the lock open with the other hand. And of course, to drive a lot to do it back once I got it unlocked, I'm try to drive off. But, you know, I was just like destined to get the fuck out. So I had the little nigga still crammed in and still was trying to fight to get the lock open. So when I finally got the lock open, I opened the door and turned around to get out. He shot me in the back of my arm. And I like kind of fell out, like right here. I fell out the van. And he shot me again on the ground, hit me in my back. And they tried to take off. And then he tried to take off a little bit. They put the car back in reverse. Like they was about to run me over, but. Like, you know, I guess like so many people out here, you put it back in drive and drove off. Like, I was laying here, I wiggled my top, see I wasn't like paralyzed, wiggled my bottom. It was like, all right, I'm cool. I didn't panic. You know, uh, my homie Will Gates got out the car because he was riding with me, he was filming. He jumped out, made a few calls for me, called the ambulance. Um, I called one of my homies and he called my baby mama. So I was just sitting on the phone, like, but I was burning up like crazy. I was super thirsty. 
I kept telling him to give me some ice water. And I was just burning up. So I had him to call my baby mama so I could pick a conversation to stay woke so I didn't blank out. But uh, I was so hot, he took the vest off of me. I was bloody everywhere. Pulled my shirt up so my body could get some of the cold from the ground and from the elm. But I blinked, like, clean out after a while. And, uh, the police would, like, get a homicide. Because I was unresponsive when they came. But when the ambulance came, I was right back to the spot. I told them to say, he was me to a great bed, I'd be cool. It's kind of crazy, like, what was going on through my mind, but one nothing like special going on through my mind, but like the after fact, like I was laying in the hospital and I just kept thinking like, damn, they're coming back to finish the job, you know, so I couldn't sleep for months. And uh, to where I kind of got home and used the word comfortable, but I kind of got to the point where I had a lot of security sitting by my bed and the way out of state and we was ready for whatever. Wow. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry about nothing else after that. Back better than ever. Still here though, you know. Back shining, still living. Right back no, in it. This new project gonna be crazy. It's called so Hard to Kill. Niggas yeah. already know what it is, so I'm back. Full of holes, body full of shells. I might unite with my brother when I get to hell. Feel through the sky, mailbox full of mail. I drop that coke up in that water cause I love the smell. Back to Chicago, baby. Home, my motherfucker. <laughs> you know, that was well. You already know what it is, man. It's time, man. It's time. Got a couple surprise visits, man. Yeah, man, my kids gonna go crazy. Got to get on my way. Ain't sure. seen me in six months, man. You know, I just come from an 80% chance of uh, dying, man. 20% chance of living, man. And, you know, I beat the odds, man. You know, I give it to the man upstairs, you know. It's just like, you know, when you, when you look deaf in the eye, man, you know, it's, it's, it's really time to live your life, man. Like, oh, ain't nothing to fuck. You know, it humbled me a lot. You know, it showed me the difference between friends and frenemies. You know, it, 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 it did a lot for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even explain it, man. I'm just so blessed and happy, man. You know, to get back to the family. Bum J. 
I met Better Boy. I've been knowing him man since way back, like school. We went to school together and uh, we used to always be in a project together too. Down there at Stay Way I bumped into him, just a project kid down there on the low end. But you know, five years ago, it kind of just happened organically. He was my brother for anything and we just, you know, once we was really into the rap, <laughs> it made sense. About 12 years ago, man, we met out of all places in the Cook County Jail over a state trip. You know what I mean? And we became cool. You know, he was in there doing his thing. I was doing mine. And he happened to just look at me like, man, what's up? And I'm looking at him like, what's up? He came over there, hollered at me, and you know what I'm saying? Actually, we had a fight. I know bullshit fight. We had a real all-out fight. You know what I mean? And he was my celly. He loaned somebody some of my cigarettes. And... Didn't get the money for it, and I wanted my money. And he told me, like, don't worry about my money. And I'm like, what the fuck you mean? That's my money. I want my money. And me and him got into it about that. And after that, you know what I'm saying? I looked at him, he looked at me, and was like, nigga, you hungry? I'm like, yeah, nigga, you hungry? And we cooked something to eat, and we just been cool like that ever since, man. Oh, man, you call me Chase Davis. That's my name, man. You know, and I put on for the city, man, for the, for the young wave. You know what I'm saying? I, I put on for the city, for the trap sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the city, for the gangster sound of Chicago with the music, you know what I'm saying? By starting off with my brother, the reason why I'm on this camera talking. Farquay was one of the first niggas in the city to rap to my beats. We were staying in the same crib together, you know, been in the streets or whatever, bumping into each other, doing the music shit. You know, we just got close like that. So that's the first start of the reason why I'm even out here with the beats. What's up? So, man, just tell me, like, uh, how, how long have you and Parquet been, you know, friends and, and making music together? How long me and Parquet been friends, making music together, man? I want to say over 15 years. Like, since I was a shorty, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in my late 20s now, you know what I'm saying? Like, 29, you know, so it's like, I've been doing food shit since I was at least about 17. 18, you know what I'm saying, like when I first started making beats. My name's Shake, and I might go by Shot Town Shake, Drakey D, a few things. I manage artists, um, I run a label, uh, Goon Squad Entertainment, and I run about three clothing brands. That's mine. I mean, can't go back like 15 years. Him him, my brother, uh, my brother's bump, him and bump went to school together, so. You know, ever since they both was in school, K been around. You know, they just they always been tight like that. They always been cool like that. DJ Mustafa Ross, New York to Shot Town. The one time I remember we met was at Transit, and I was coming out the club after the club, and he grabbed me like he was parked right next to the club, and he was like, "Come here, come here, come here, come here," and I was like, "Yo, what's up?" And he had his door open. And he was like, listen to this. And he started playing this song. And I was like, oh, shit, that shit dope. And he was like, yeah, that's me. I was like, oh, OK. He was like, let's hook up. And I was like, oh, OK. And we hooked up from there. And so, um, you know, it just come from, it's just like the get back, you know what I mean? Like. Nigga had to learn how to walk again. Nigga had to heal up from all them wounds. I had to patch myself up. I had to do a lot of shit myself. And then I was still out here in the streets while I was fucked up with machines and shit. Still on, just still getting up with motherfuckers. Still taking care of shit. Still in the studio. Still, you know what I mean? Trying to strengthen up. Getting inside the motherfucking therapy spots. So I was just like more so hands on. Just still out here with it. We about that real shit over here. You know what I'm saying? This shit is real life, and it, and, and it gives it to you in the perspective of you are hands-on right now in the middle of the gutter with a reporter. <laughs> That's from right there. Right. Well, we working hard right now, man. I mean, Shout the object is to flood the streets. Bishop, man. Aldo, man. Man, um, you know, shout out to the squad, man. Um, so what we about to do, you know, we gonna bring that griminess back to the streets, man. Um, you know, bring music back, that real rap back, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just make a statement. And, um, you know, as far as the hands-on project, man, um, the streets already know what to expect from Parquet. You know, you're going to get your hustling shit, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get your fly shit, you're going to get shit for the bitches, you know what I'm saying? 
you know, uh, just a solid way around the project, man. You know what I mean? Shit, it's what I do. How the fuck can we lose right now, dog? You know what I'm saying? You got, like, you got so much shit, like, like, man, my background don't lie, bro. My story don't lie, bro. It ain't like I'm around this bitch boasting and bragging. It just is what it is, man. You know, some shit I don't do no more. I just grew out of. Years in time, I call it. <laughs> and a bunch of learned lessons. Well, they say the turtle wins the race, right? Everything that looked like a monster is a monster. Until you snatch the mask off it. Everything nowadays is fake. From the rappers to the jury. Damn it, they rented ass cars. Don't nobody own shit. Not even the blocks that they shed their own blood on. And all these bitches out here tricking these niggas. Wearing these $4,000 bags. And they ain't even got $400 in them. Wow. This the game though. But this shit right here is the get back season. Circle smaller than a period. I keep this shit hands on. Every bullet felt like fire when it hit me. Damn. I guess the devil tested my faith with the Lord. The angels in the most high said it wasn't my time. So I shine and live every day like my last. Cause I know how the last day could feel if you don't make it. <laughs> Digest that. What you mean don't buy that hundred thousand dollar car? What you mean don't buy that hundred thousand dollar chain? What you mean don't spoil my kids cause that could fuck them up? Nigga, I was almost gone. I gotta get this shit my own. My two younger brothers dead. Plus my oldest brother just got two life sentences. Plus seven years in the feds. It's just me and my mother now. Damn. Well, I guess I didn't talk long enough. It's not a sad story. It's just my story. It's Parquet. I'm signing out. Hands on, coming soon. Remain humble. Keep your uh, your, your, your circle tight, super tight knit. Uh, and just hunker down, man, and embrace your power, bro. And, uh, you know, tap into that God speed that you got. You know what I mean? So. You, you, you know exactly what the goals and the missions is, man. So embrace that, man. And don't let no fuck niggas come in your way. Keep winning. Keep putting all your energy to this music. You know, other than other shit that happened, you know, that's done in the past, you hit now. You know what I mean? And just appreciate your new lease on life, bro. You know what I mean? And keep keep doing what you're doing and working, man, because it's all, it's all starting to pay off. here for a so, you know. Start to look at life a little different. Yeah. Focus. We got that later.